Hello everyone, here is a look at the back side of our haunted house facade. We are about to take this down, but before we do, we wanted to show you what it looks like back here. Well, the first thing I'm sure you'll notice is all the material hanging down everywhere, which we use for blocking out the sky and our real house from the window openings on the facade. And it also helped give us the illusion of uh, separated little rooms inside. We used black duvetine and leftover painted burlap from our 2012 maze. Obviously duvetine works better for uh, blocking unwanted light, but we ran out and uh, once it's nighttime, you can barely tell a difference anyway. We even covered um, the lower section of the decks with material so that you couldn't see all those unsightly cables and wires that get tangled up in big huge knots. We attached the material by stapling it to the wood pieces above. And then what we would do is we would just roll it up and clamp it into place when we needed to work on the facade. It was really cool having this secret space back here where the two of us could hide and eavesdrop on the guests talking about the haunt or the ones getting startled by the moving props out front. It was funny. All right, so now that we've removed all the drops, you can see the second level pretty well. And uh, it definitely looks like a big dollhouse with a bunch of creepy dudes hanging out the windows. <laughs> As you can see, all the walls and angled roof panels are framed with one by three pine and skinned with quarter inch Luan, glued and shot together with staples. We use three quarter plywood to frame the center curved bell shaped roof and then skin that with the quarter inch bender board. The nice thing is that we built all the sections and sizes that the two of us could manage. And we lifted them up to each other and then we screwed them into place every foot or so. It's important to use good quality screws because oftentimes we use the cheap drywall screws and the heads snap off once you drive them into place. It's no fun when your walls are all stuck together and you're trying to carefully pry the walls apart while hanging on for dear life 20 feet up in the air on a ladder. <laughs> because of the way we designed this facade, we only had to use two jacks and uh, brace the very back corners of the house. The center walls, along with the front porch covering, and then the second story decks all help stabilize the entire thing. All the lower walls were screwed down to the bottom decks, and both levels of the deckings were constructed with three quarter inch plywood and two by four framing. It was plenty strong to support us up on the ladders. Once we had all the wood pieces into place, I attached the welded steel uh, decorative ridge crestings along the top and then covered them with uh, web gun cobwebs. You can see the way we mounted the uh, haunted HH owl weather vane here. It really stunk. I never took the time to weatherproof that and it ended up giving us some trouble shorting out on Halloween night when it rained. Oh, dang it. We wired the Funkin' up to flickering LED lights and then we mounted it up in the attic. And you'll notice that all the plexiglass pieces that make up the window panels were actually busted up pieces that we just screwed into place in a way that looked good from the front. Leaving them in larger chunks makes it uh, nice for future projects and no one saw the back anyway. I used a Dremel with the sanding disc to smooth over all the edges of the broken glass, but not in enough time to save Gina from cutting her little finger. Ow! We really made a mess of our cables this year, as you can see. I mean, we had large pipes and wires for LED lighting, air hoses, chase units, and solenoid valves all over the place. I was able to recycle things like plywood brackets from our coffin poppers to mount those air cylinders which move the window shutters up front. That skeleton hand pulling back the curtain was another old gag from our old western ghost town. And that baseball teasing skelly in the window is powered by our fan that makes heads turn. Both the upper and lower level had fog pipes plumbed with uh, separate coolers for the ultimate haunted house foggy coverage. The skeletons with the LED eyes in each of the windows were strategically placed by attaching them to the walls in ways that Gina decided while looking from the outside of the house. Hey, you like the way I'm peeping out this window? Each of the windows had some sort of curtains, whether it was blue material or lace, and it was either stapled to the back of the framing or it was uh, stapled to a wooden curtain rod and then shredded up to give it that haunted look. Here's our peekaboo prop, which really needs to retire. The motor and everything just needs to be rebuilt, and he's real clunky now. Who you call clunky? Here was a little ghost that we had peeking out the broken glass here and uh, what we did is we took our little foam head and we cut out eyes on an old sheet which made a creepy little effect because the eyes are realistic looking. 
Then we had this little black light here that made them glow. And then this fan that was connected to the same chase unit as the weather vane. So the fan would turn off and on, making it blow around. Originally, I wanted to put them on an air cylinder or something, but I just ran out of time. On the front door, again, you can see the way we did the glass. Uh, we had a lock on the door to keep people out. And um, you can see the cables and our air hose for the air cannon that was connected to the doorbell. So here's some lighting attached with strain reliefs. Now this, this thing was covered all over with motion sensors this year and this one uh, controlled the shutters up above. It was really nice this year having the decks above ground to run all the LED cables and everything down below to hide it, which uh, made it really nice for um, filming this year on the show. I didn't even have to worry about cable dressing. I just drilled holes and dropped the cables down. So all these black walls were connected together into uh, free-floating um, barriers to block all the houses and back. We set them up in like T and L-shaped layouts uh, and we used a few jacks weighted down by sandbags to stabilize them. These are Tonka's old uh, dog steps here to step down off the platform. Originally we were going to have it drop down into a basement maze leading back through the carport but we ran out of time and energy and next time right well i think that just about covers everything for our 2014 haunted house walkthrough uh, i hope that was informative for y'all and uh as always thank you so much for watching